Welcome back to the channel. This is episode five of my trailer build. In this video, I will be showing you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to install electric brakes on a 3,500 pound axle for my off-grid trailer that I'm building. If you're new to the channel, um, this is a one step of uh, several that I'll be doing to construct a, my version of an off-grid trailer from scratch. I built the frame. I'm currently working on the wooden frame in my garage to um, install it in panels on top of the metal frame that I have built. Um, but first, before I can do all that, I have to install some electric brakes because once you get past a certain um, weight on your trailer, they're required by law. So in this video, I'll be showing you a um, complete guide to how to install them and some tricks you're going to need to know if you ever want to do it yourself. But first I have to stop by Princess Auto and pick up all my supplies for this project. Thanks for watching. First step is lifting up the trailer securely on some scissor jacks. When I designed my trailer, I wanted to have a lot of ground clearance. I was able to purchase a set of five wheels from a Jeep that was getting upgraded for $200. Using Jeep tires on a standard trailer axle requires a spacer adapter, and I'll get into that later in the video. First step is to knock off the protective dust cap, and that will expose the end of the spindle where there is a cotter pin that needs to be removed. Now this hub will be taken off and I won't be reusing this part. You can see the smaller bearings that come off. The new brake drum kit has its own set of bearings, so I won't be using those, but I will be keeping those as a backup set. So the electric brakes have a left and a right. They're clearly labeled and there's a device on the bottom of the brake just below the magnet on how you adjust them and I'll get into that later in the video. So this is your electric brake that has four studs that comes out the back of it. It attaches onto the axle which is a very standard setting. Comes with some locking nuts that securely fastens it to the axle. There's two sets of bearings that go on. I'm gonna dry fit them and show you exactly where they will be once they're inside the drum. The larger bearing goes on first, and the smaller bearing will go on last. It's very important to have these bearings completely covered in grease. To do that, I bought a little device that's known as a bearing packer. And basically what it does is it's a two suction cups that compress the bearing between them. In the metal pipe, there's a hole between the suction cups that your grease gun will push grease through and you will compress the grease until it starts to make its way through the fine openings of the bearing. That will ensure that the bearing is completely packed with grease, which is the most important part of this entire project. You don't need one of these devices, but I didn't want to risk not having the bearings completely lubricated with grease. Ah. 
So once the bearing is completely lubricated, the larger bearing goes into the opening on the drum. And there's a protective seal that goes on top of that that will need to be forced in there with a wooden or rubber mallet. Some people put a piece of two by four on there and hammer it in. It has to fit flush and you should give it a feel so that it's completely flush to the metal rim. The brake drum then goes on and the smaller bearing goes into the end of the brake drum over top of the spindle. Try to get as much grease in there as you can. This particular axle does have a grease fitting and I'll get into that later in the video. So the smaller bearing goes in there, completely covered in grease. It will fit snug in there and then you will have a washer to go over top of the bearing. And now the castle nut needs to be installed. Again, grease up the castle nut and it will not require a lot of tension. It will screw on. I give it a little bit of a torque with my channel locks and then turn it back just a bit, making sure the wheel can spin freely. And then you need to line up the castle nut so that it lines up with the hole in the spindle for the cotter pin to go through. Once you have the cotter pin through, you need to bend it over and back in front of the spindle, exactly how it was when I removed the original one. Now the final step is to use my grease gun to ensure that the whole setup is completely full of grease. And you can see the grease actually making its way out of the brake drum opening. And that, I spin it around to ensure that it's completely covered in grease. We'll give that a quick wipe off. And now it's time to put the protective dust cap on top of there. and the brake assembly is complete. When you're building a trailer, there are a dizzying amount of options for your bolt configuration. A standard trailer configuration is five by four and a half. To utilize Jeep rims, standard Jeep rims, are a five on five bolt pattern. There's a very common adapter that you can buy on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below that you can attach to the brake drum and then it will give you the correct bolt pattern to use the Jeep rims. So I'll be going from the four and a half, which is the gray circles, to the five, which is the orange. And that spacer that I have, that adapter, will get me to that ratio that I can safely use the Jeep rims. and the electric brake assembly is now assembled. There'll be two green wires running from the brakes that now need to be installed into the back of your truck. However, I will be using a seven pin setup that will also be running into my brake lights, reverse lights, running lights of my trailer. So that will be another video. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. 
And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to see how the trailer build is going. This is an outdoor adventure channel, so once the trailer is built, I'll be dragging around North America, hopefully to some very epic locations to show you some pretty amazing scenery. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.